My name is R. Crosby Lyles, and this is News from the Can. My last video, entitled Common Sense Energy Device Hidden Since the 70s, was intended to inspire power engineers and other interested people to investigate the concept of a pressure differential hydraulic prime mover as an efficiency booster and a carbon sequester device. I didn't necessarily intend the text to be terribly technical, nevertheless, not that many people are familiar with thermodynamic concepts. In particular, my girlfriend wanted to know what the difference is between an isothermal and an, and an isentropic process and why it matters. As I fumbled for an explanation, Einstein's most famous quote scorched my ego. If you can't explain it to a six-year-old, you probably don't understand it yourself. So I should be able to find relatable imagery for my super competent longtime professional in the healthcare industry girlfriend, let alone a six-year-old, to understand. Entropy was relatively easy to explain as a general concept, but without a lengthy discussion defining terms, trying to explain the difference between thermodynamic processes seemed nearly impossible. I was caught between two terrible possibilities. Either I didn't really understand what I was talking about, or Einstein was full of shit. For a moment, I kind of lost my mind. Okay, Einstein. Even if I can half-ass explain an entropy to a child, they won't be able to get the science right on a shaft force problem. And the ugly truth is that unless they can solve pencil and paper thermodynamic problems, they won't really understand thermo. So take that, Einstein. For a moment, I satisfied myself with the notion that some things are just too complicated to explain to some people. However, once my petulant frenzy subsided, I realized that I had a real challenge to overcome. I wasn't going to rest until I was not only able to explain entropy to a child, but the difference between an isentropic and an isothermal process as well. My self-esteem was seriously on the line. It was do or die. So here's what I came up with. Entropy is a measure of disorder that slows mommies and daddies down. Mommy can't find your favorite socks when your room looks like a tornado hit it. That's because mommy has to look under all of your junk before she finally gets lucky and finds the right pile of your carelessly tossed crap laying on top of your socks. If your room was spotless, mommy would only have to point to the sock drawer and you could get your Spider-Man socks out for yourself. Order makes the whole process run more smoothly and faster with less friction. To illustrate the difference between isentropic and isothermal expansion, purse your lips and blow on your wrist. The air from your mouth cools your wrist. Now with your mouth wide open, exhale on the same spot. Your wrist feels the warmth of the inside of your lungs as the air comes out. Pursed lips create a pressure difference for an isentropic free expansion that prevents the air from communicating the temperature of your lungs to your wrist. A wide open exhale moves the air without compressing it, so the temperature of the air stays roughly the same as it moves in an isothermal expansion. I like this example because it communicates on an intuitive level how heat and entropy can flow and how they relate to temperature. Another example of an isentropic process is that if you inflate a tire, it gets warm, and if you let the air out, the tire gets cold, especially the stem. So when things expand without a transfer of energy in the form of heat, entropy goes up and temperature goes down. When things are compressed without a transfer of energy in the form of heat, entropy goes down and temperature goes up. Heat, temperature, and entropy are intimately related. Most instructors would probably use melting ice or boiling water to make steam as examples of an isothermal process. Because the temperature of ice water stays at zero degrees Celsius until all the ice is melted in an insulated container. And the temperature of boiling water stays at 100 degrees Celsius until all the water has turned to steam. The steam can then be heated to as high a temperature as you want. The transfer of heat into the water gets used up to change the phase of the water from liquid to vapor in the case of boiling and liquid to solid in the case of freezing. Now let's imagine a hundred pigeons in a large cage. The door to the cage can be opened a little bit so that only a small number of birds can escape at a time or all the way so that all the birds can escape all at once. A brand new Escalade is parked on the street beneath the door of the cage. Entropy is the relative disorder of the birds as they sit or fly. Heat is carried inside the birds in the form of poo. Before we open the cage, the birds are constantly squabbling with each other for a different seat in evenly spaced rows on their perches. The squabbling represents the kinetic energy of temperature. 
When we open the door of the cage a little bit, the birds come out one or two at a time in a steady stream. Only a few drops of poo will reach the Escalade parked below. The same relative order inside the cage as outside the cage leads to less poo being dropped on the Escalade. Squabbling decreases just as temperature goes down in an isentropic process. Now we open the cage door as wide as it will go. The birds all jump off their perches and pile out the door in a disorganized flurry of feathers and poo. Needless to say, the Escalade is going to need a serious wash and wax. The squabbling flock squabbles out the door and continues squabbling as they fly away in various directions. Disorder of the flock goes up. Heat in the form of poo communicates out and temperature in the form of squabbling stays constant. And of course, this is an example of an isothermal process. Note the color coding here. Q equals T delta S. T is usually the absolute temperature. It's the absolute temperature here. When the change in entropy, delta S, is zero, the transfer of energy, aka heat, Q, is also zero. When temperature T is constant, the transfer of heat, Q, and the change in entropy, delta S, can go up or down. Melting ice and condensing steam are both isothermal processes that are endothermic and exothermic respectively, where entropy changes significantly. Heat engines come in many different configurations that differ according to how different thermodynamic processes are combined. The auto cycle in a car engine, for example, is modeled by an isentropic compression of a fuel-air mixture followed by a constant volume process as the fuel burns and an isentropic expansion during the power stroke as well as a constant pressure process to evacuate the exhaust and take in more air. The combination of an isentropic compression and expansion with an isothermal compression and expansion can be found in the non-ideal Carnot engine of your refrigerator or the Rankine cycle of a coal-fired power plant. Isothermal processes typically involve a phase change like water or steam and vice versa. Carnot is the idealized isentropic isothermal engine. Rankin is the non-idealized steam turbine cycle typically used for electric power generation. So there you have it. Entropy as it relates to an isentropic versus isothermal process explained to a six-year-old. If you like this content, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe, because it really helps us when you do that. That's about it for now. My name is R. Crosby Lyles, and this is News from the Can. Thanks for watching. See you.